So let us talk about how to use, for example, the edit menu to insert variables and um, to go to variables, uh, uh, insert cases, go to cases. All right, so please note, as we said here, that a variable is a single person, a single question on your questionnaire. However, if you notice in the data view, your variable names will appear in the columns. Hmm? But in the variable view, the variables appear in the rows, and that's because there is no data in the variable view. There is just the variables. Now, first things first, how do I actually um, create a new variable in the software? Now, if I was operating from a blank file, you would, this would be row one, right? And what in order to create a new variable, the, the truth is all you have to do is get to the space that says name and begin to type in the variable name. Please note that the, 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 the variable name field does not take spaces. So if you want to create a space between words, you have to use a underscore or you can just actually make the, the, the names, um, just the words kind of stuck together without any kind of space between them, right? So this is me creating a variable called iColor. So I have just typed in the word and I'm going to press enter. Notice that the row begins to auto-populate as the software begins to guess the nature of the variable. But pretty much most of this, if not all, can be changed by you. So in entering your variable name, the next thing that you're going to be doing is actually adding the variable label. And this, as I noted, provides we, provides the, um, the, the user of the, 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 the data set with more information on what the variable is measuring. So here, we are going to actually write in eye color of respondents. Please note here that you can use it the way that you would use any text field in um, a spreadsheet. So spaces, full stops, um, capital letters, etc. Now, in terms of inserting a value label, oh, I just enter. So let's do that again. I color of respondents. Enter. Now it stays. When it comes to value labels, remember now what I said, the value labels are the numbers that tell you what um what each number are the anchors or labels that tell you what each number stands for. So in order to enter a value label, what you go do is you actually double click on the value labels cell. So the cell that corresponds in the value labels column and you begin to actually um enter now in terms of how you code and coding is a process of assigning a number um to a particular response so how you code your responses are going to be based pretty much on you what you would like to see um right so let us um i'm going to develop my own coding scheme for the responses and when you create your questionnaire you would be utilizing the the information that you you get from like the skills that you are um the skills that you are that you are that you are using um you can probably you will have where your coding scheme develops from there when it comes to other variables like gender um for ex for example you will develop your own coding scheme or you might use a coding scheme that has been adopted by somebody else but in this instance i'm going to make black eyes black eye color equal to one. So anywhere you see a one in the data file, it would mean that the person who responded to that question's eye color is black. So you type the value into here, you type the value label into here, and you click add. Two, I'm going to make brown. Add. Three, I'm going to make green. Add. And you would actually continue this process and adding all the, the different response categories. And when you are finished adding all response categories, you go ahead and click OK and your value labels are entered. Now, if I had, for example, uh, 
person's not wishing to state their eye color, and I decided that I'm going to code all of those responses as nine. So nine would be prefer not to say, add, okay. Then when it comes to missing values, I would go here and I would actually, um, again, um, the default is always no missing values. Software will assume that all the data that is presented is valid. So you now have to go ahead and select discrete missing value and enter the value that is associated with um, that invalid response that you want to be ignored, right? And note here that there are spaces for three missing values. If you have more than three missing values, you would have to use um, this range plus one optional discrete missing value. And I will show you that. And what that does is literally um, say, for example, the, you had um, nine, don't know, 99, um, sorry, nine, nine, prefer not to say, 98, don't know, and 99, not applicable, and then you had a zero as, let's see, NAP. So say, for example, you had those three, three values to deal with. You had zero, which was NAP, nine, which is prefer not to say, 98, which is don't know, and 99, which is NA, and I only have three spaces. I would have to try to use range plus one optional discrete missing value. Now, how that works is that if you have where um, all values from one low number to a high number are all missing, then you are able to say, for example, that low, you identify the low missing value here, you identify the high missing value here, and any other missing value that is outside that range would come here, but it has to be just one number. So for example, in this case, we had where, and let's go back and look at this, where the eye colors were black, brown, green, prefer not to see. So say for example, like I said, I had zero, which was an AP add. I had 98, which was don't know. And then you had 99, which was NA add. Then I have here, look, zero. That's a discrete missing value. But then I had all the values from nine to 99 as missing because 9, 98, and 99 are no responses that we cannot use. I am able to actually say to the software here, use range plus one optional missing value. Make the low missing value 9, make the high missing value 99, and make the discrete missing value 0. And what that will do is make everything from 9 to 99 missing as well as 0. That means that anything you cannot have a valid response between 9 and 99. If that, that, is, that should not be the case, in fact, and that is a function of your coding. That's why normally we make our missing values high numbers that are outside the range of numbers that would actually become um, valid responses. So instead of using um, three or four or five as missing, we normally tend towards the 999, 999, 999, 9, 9, 9. Um, So we use literally like just combinations of nines until we have covered all our missing values because it increases the likelihood that um, if we have to actually um, deal with and declare multiple missing values, we're able to use either the discrete missing values um, field or the, um, the, um, the, the range plus one discrete missing value function. Note here that the measure is currently scale. Please make sure that you are changing its eye color. The numbers don't really mean anything because you can't count up 
all of the eye colors here. So therefore, you would make this what? Nominal. Right? So there we have it. Okay? So in creating a new variable, just, just go over the steps. We will actually just literally find that empty cell, the first empty cell, type the variable name in. Then you can specify your decimal points. The, the software here automatically assumes two decimal points. But if you want the number to be a number that has no decimal places, you can change that number to zero. You would enter your variable label and press enter. You would double click on the value labels cell and insert your value labels. And you do this by putting the number here and putting the corresponding value here and clicking add. Once you are finished doing all of that, you can click OK and be finished. You can come back and modify again by double clicking. You realize that the software will rearrange even if you add a number that so you don't have to add zero first, right? You can go back and add zero after and it will rearrange. All right. You um, if you know you're missing values straight off the bat, you go ahead and declare them. Um, I will show you how to declare missing values if you don't know them straight off the bat, right? There you go. Um, and these will automatically populate. However, I strongly recommend that you change the level of measurement based on your knowledge of this variable. So this is how you would create a new variable in the software. But say, for example, you are actually um, entering data from your questionnaires manually. And that's, that's where to say you are doing a paper questionnaire. And you realize that you have missed a question on your questionnaire you didn't enter that question at all so say for example that would have that question would have been question four and you missed question four and you have to enter question four and you want it to be in order as as they are now what you're able to do is actually go to row four and use your cursor to click on the number associated with the variable and you are able to right click and insert variable and when you click insert variable uh what will happen is that the ver what will happen is that the software will actually push the other variable down and create a space where you wanted your new variable to be inserted why is this thing not responding i do not know okay there we go so you see now same row four we see that variable has been um, created. Similarly, you can actually remove a variable the same way by going back to that same space, right clicking and click clear variables. And when you click clear variables, what will happen is that it will delete that whole variable. So that entire row will go. So this is one way of um, inserting and or clearing a variable. There's another way to insert or clear variables. You can go to the edit menu and click. So again, you still have to highlight the row where you want new variable to go and you go to edit and then you insert variable. And you're able to go back to the edit menu and clear that variable the same way. Okay, great. So other things that you're able to do in the edit menu is go to variable. And what you do here is you're literally pretty much selecting a variable. Um, so if you wanted to find a particular variable and if they were named properly, um, and this is a basic data set that needs to be cleaned up and modified, so putting in names, etc. Um, so you are able to just click on the variable and click go to and the, the software will automatically go to that variable. Now, if you're in the variable view, you'll notice that it only has the go to variable option. But if you go to data view, it will now give you a insert case and go to case option. And that is because in addition to being able to, for example, add a variable, here, edit, insert variable. And remember, in the variable view, you're in inserting a new variable, so which is going to be a new column. Or you can, again, 
edit and clear variable right you are actually able to insert cases and that's say for example you had missed a person's response and that um that questionnaire was labeled as um respondent number six and so you want to make a space here again just like you would be able to insert variable using the right click you're able to insert case right um right click you're able to clear a case you are also able to use the edit, insert case, and of course, edit, clear cases. Mm -hmm. You are also able to go to a particular case here by saying you want respondent number 100. Go. Let's see. Edit. Go to case. go to hmm what's happening well it should go to the case I don't know what's happening here and it go to case I feel like the cursor went there but I'm just not seeing it let's see all right so I give up on that I'm not going to stress myself about it, but normally that works. It works better for going to variables clearly than it does um, for going to cases. All right. So those are some of the things in your edit menu that you are able to use. You are also able to find, um, but I don't, you can use it to find, but I don't, ex I don't recommend that you try to replace anything. Right. So you are able to find a particular case etc okay so the options menu when you do the variable lists um, display names should be your um, your filter and it should also sort by name so this also puts them in alphabetical order so you kind of know where to um, where to find things in the output window so when you run a procedure this says that you should maximize the output window um i'm going to click raise i don't know what that means i'm going to try it for the first time i think that means that it's going to pop it up but we'll see um and click ok all right so that's the edit menu analyze menu we utilize to run some of our most common procedures like a frequent distribution a cross tab comparing means also to do analysis like a linear regression um, factor analysis which we use to create indices bivariate correlation which we use to, to to test relationships between procedures to get the reliability analysis which is the cronbach's alpha um, and we also are able to do our t-test as well as our one-way analysis of variance and we'll talk about all of those um, as we go along okay um, I did mention the graphs etc and so uh, we won't necessarily get into that just now because we will come back to it in a little bit so how do I rename a variable in um, the software but it actually is quite easy. You just literally go to the variable, type, click into the cell, and just type over the name. Bear in mind, though, guys, that as I said, variable names don't take spaces. So you want to make sure that you are um, paying attention to the rules of variable naming when it comes to this the software 